Hi, this is Jeffrey Cohen, President and Founder of U.S. Advanced Computing Infrastructures, and we're here to talk today about our use of quantum and classical algorithms, specifically on the D-Wave Quantum Annealer, to pick efficient stock portfolios for investors. And so we're going to talk today about our approach, what we intended to accomplish, what we have accomplished, and our next steps. And we're going to try to give you a sense of the business value as well. So what did we set out to accomplish? So we wanted to run portfolios of a reasonable size on a quantum annealer. So what we did is we reformulated the Sharpe ratio because it just wouldn't work on the quantum annealer. We couldn't figure out how to do the division, because it's a ratio, through linear algebra, which requires a linear, mo linear model. And so we scale the problem. We did. We changed, came up with a new formulation. We scaled the problem to 40 assets, and we ran it. Then we did 60 assets. Then we did 64 assets, which is what we're running now. Now, 64 assets or stocks is the same thing as a cliche or a fully connected um, vertices on the graph. And so 64 stocks would be looking at 2 to the 64 options of portfolios. We use five classical solvers in the D-Wave to find efficient portfolios in under a minute. The ideal portfolio that we identified the first time around with 60 stocks, we published on Medium. And we've been tracking the results of those, of those of that portfolio. By the way, it's doing great beat the benchmarks in the first two measurement periods, and we just now published a second portfolio based on 64 stocks on August 31st. Net-net, what we found in the second paper, which is a preprint and archive, um, is that investors can use either classical or quantum annealing systems to pick stocks, pick efficient portfolios. We continue our research. We're going to add back testing. We're going to add different asset classes. We're looking at maybe extending or decreasing the amount of time um, where the, uh, the portfolio makes sense, and we're starting to do our research on quantum walks on graphs. So what is this new formulation? Why not just use the Sharpe ratio? In fact, the Federal Reserve Bank asked us the same question last week. So the Sharpe ratio is a division problem. And so, I mean, you know what it is, but I'll just review it for those who are listening. So the Sharpe ratio for a portfolio, or the weights of that portfolio, times beta for the stocks, times the expected return of the market minus the risk-free return, plus adding back the risk-free return. So that's a multiplication divided by the standard deviation of that portfolio. It's great. It's been working since uh, for a very, very long time, right? 70 years. And then we came up with a simplification just to make the math a little easier, which is the, the Chicago quantum ratio which is just taking the weight of the stocks times the covariance of those stocks against the market divided by the standard deviation of that portfolio. What we find is that the Chicago quantum ratio doesn't use any of the nominal things that you might worry about, like what's the nominal return, meaning not real, not adjusted for inflation? What's your interest rate? How much does the stock market go up? And the problem with that is the answers aren't really comparable from period to period if inflation changes. Chicago quantum ratio is a real indicator. Now come over to the right side and you see the Chicago quantum net score takes the variance of that weighted portfolio, so if it's 10 stocks, 10% of each, minus the expected return of that portfolio, also weighted, but raised to a power. We call that the CQNS power, and it's 2 plus alpha, and we started off when we were at 40 and 60 assets at an alpha of 1. We've now moved to an alpha of 2 because the stock market went up a lot. And unfortunately, really high expected returns will drown out the variance. So you just end up picking really risky portfolios. But as you adjust the power, you pick up more stocks and, relatively speaking, less risk which we think you need to do in the market, as an example, the NASDAQ's up over 40% in the past year. So the formulation works. So we tested it against the Sharpe ratio. So we calculate the Sharpe ratio using Monte Carlo. At first, we were just doing Monte Carlo of a street distribution centered around N over 2. So what does I mean in English? If I'm doing 64 stocks, I'm sampling around 32 stocks. So I might get 20 or 25. 
up to let's say 40 or 42. And so all of my portfolios are in that middle range. Eventually, and what you see on the chart is we added a fat-tailed Monte Carlo. So we start by seeding our model with a bunch of runs at the center, the discrete distribution, but we also add one asset, two asset, three asset, four asset. We add a couple of thousand runs on each of those. And so it builds a nice distribution of the whole environment, allows us to visualize the energy, and we pick up a lot of portfolios we wouldn't have picked. So I'll just take you to the net net. This chart right here, the 461, this shows 461 quantum runs. Those are dots in red. Then you have your genetic algorithm runs. This is the best solution, which is up here in the corner, plus the last couple of runs. And then you're comparing that to the classic. So the classic is the 930,000 Monte Carlo, both discrete and fat tailed. And so the yellow makes up the efficient frontier. So that says for any given point of standard deviation, what's the most expected return I can get? Now what we found in the two papers, so those are to the right, the red is quantum, is that the red, if you run it enough times, it either meets or exceeds the efficient frontier you can get from a Monte Carlo. Meets or actually stretches further. And if you just ran, let's say, two quantum portfolios, you said, well, just, just do two, Jeff, show me what you get, or do 30. You see that the quantum portfolios, those red dots, are very much high into the left. They're right at the efficient frontier as found by the Monte Carlo analysis. So that gave us a lot of comfort that this was a good proxy for a Monte Carlo. So what did we accomplish? We've kept our focus on U.S. liquid equities. We solved for the asset universe, and we compared the performance against the best classical options we could. We then solved a 60-asset stock universe, and we compared the performance, except we compared it against a much improved set of classical options. The feedback we received from the first paper, and thank you if one of you that's listening were one of the ones who gave us the feedback. So we developed a simulated annealer. Um, both coded ourselves so that we could tune it, as well as using D-Waves. We, we basically upgraded our genetic algorithm, and we came up with a brand new Monte Carlo analysis. We also ran against not only the quantum annealer, but the D-Wave simulated annealer, the taboo sampler, and the hybrid sampler. So that's great, because now we have the D-Wave competing much more aggressively with the best that we can run on our, basically our company's in-home computers. We also recently solved a 64 asset universe that we've designed a minimum viable product to go to market with. And we now much better understand the, the challenges to scaling around scaling up to more assets. So our last paper, 60 assets, what did we find? So we had six methods that solve it in under a minute by finding either the ideal portfolio or the best portfolio, the ideal portfolio we allowed it to find. And that was using both non-proprietary methods on Python 3.7 or the D-Wave system. And so what we found to the left is the best model, which was genetic algorithm with a random seed, took seven seconds. By the way, at the end of the full research project, it was 48 seconds to run the genetic algorithm with D-Wave. We think it was a memory issue. We went back and re-ran it. It took six seconds. So seven or six seconds to do genetic algorithm. 11 or 15 seconds to do simulated annealer. The quantum annealer took 21 seconds, but that included all of our runs, all of our calibration work. And so we expect that to be 15 seconds if we were to do a thorough research engagement again. And then the Monte Carlo fat tail took 24 seconds. So it's good. Taboo sampler, it took 267 seconds, and it really didn't give us very good solutions. And the hybrid sampler, we just can't get that to give us valid portfolios, and we're not sure why. So again, the ideal portfolio is the minimum Chicago quantum net score, which is variance minus return raised to a power. And the sharp ratio is the maximum of basically uh, the risk, I'm sorry, the return, expected return over the standard deviation. It's the same thing for the Chicago quantum ratio. More initial results. So what did we pick? Well, the first 60 stocks we picked were largely centered randomly around the beginning of the alphabet, AA to CLR, and we added PayPal. 
and we picked AMP and APA, so Ameriprise and Apache, so a mid-tier financial services firm and an oil exploration company. And those tend to move together, up. They offset each other. So imagine two rocks thrown in the water, the waves offset each other and they cancel each other out. That's terrific. You can't find that reading a stock report or looking at the news. You need to go into every day's trading data to find out the stocks that offset each other. So they go up with beta, but they don't go down as often because they cancel each other out. We found that and we felt great and we published those results in Medium and we've been tracking those results. By the way, those results, if you look at our January, July 15 Medium article, 14% after five weeks up on a market that's been going up between 6.18 and 7% depending on the benchmark. So that's pretty good. Now, we did it again. So we picked a new stock pick off of 64 stocks. And here, Monte Carlo didn't pick quite the best one and we gave it 94 seconds to run. 64 stocks we're finding is a little tougher than 60. The genetic algorithm did find the best solution. And when we seeded it with D-Wave stocks, it went from 24 seconds to 20. The simulated annealer that we, that we wrote actually added a fifth stock. It added Twitter. The simulated annealer from D-Wave just gave us very different results. And the quantum annealer from D-Wave gave us very similar results, but added a few more. And so we picked, ultimately, the classical portfolio, which we would look at as being validated by the D-Wave. And we've published that on, our, on Medium. We had to make some changes. We had to set floors and ceilings on the market indices. Because the stock market's rising so much, it's skewing the results. And we also adjusted the power settings, or, you know, 2 plus alpha. And that's helping us to get, you know, four stock answers. What are our goals moving forward? So the first is we want to mature and expand our portfolio optimization model and the application that's going to run. We're going to cap it at 64 stocks because right now we're using the D-Wave systems Chimera architecture, the 2K. We're going to add diverse asset types, at least we're looking at those. We're going to evaluate shorter duration investment horizons. And we're going to add back testing and independent portfolio tiling and a design user experience or user interface. Um, what does it mean independent portfolio tiling? So we just got feedback. So we're picking 64 random stocks question is, can you really put those together? Could you look at 640 stocks by running this 10 times and then putting the answers together? We're going to find that out and we're going to add that into our model. We're also evaluating right now quantum walks on graphs and we're testing a hypothesis that says quantum walks on graphs can and will add value in financial services and Chicago Quantum is going to be one of those firms that you can come to to learn about it. And our hope is to earn revenues by serving clients, and that way we can grow the team and build even more capabilities. Some interesting details. So the first is there's a scale challenge. So as we boost up the size of the portfolios and we feed them into a cubo, the quadratic terms contain the variance terms, the covariance terms. Those get very small, really small, like two zeros and a three when the linear terms, which are your expected returns, are scaled to a number that um, maxes at either 0 0.90 or 0 0.99. That's why it's yellow. So when you're in small portfolios, that is darker green or even purple. So it's harder to find your traction when the quadratic terms are so small. But in order to have accurate portfolio values or CQNS values, you have to honor it and you have to keep the accurate value. The other scale challenge is we run in a qubit, 60 assets. And we figured out at 64, we're done. And the third is the scale challenge. We can only effectively find a cliche or a fully connected set of vertices or stocks and embedding for 64 stocks. And at 64 stocks, if we use fixed embedding, because we can use lazy, we can use fixed embedding, or we could use just embedding composite, um, it doesn't always work. So if we run 64 stocks, we could run it four times or 14 times before it works. We are expecting Pegasus, though, to give us the ability to run more stocks. 
we had a couple of engineering accomplishments. So the first is we have to do an affine transformation that keeps the zero values accurate for CQ and S. It keeps the actual portfolio size accurate, but it adds a penalty whenever the portfolio size isn't exactly what we want. And that makes the D-wave quantum annealer find those energy values more often, and it improves, improves the efficiency of our run. You see to the left, the blue are the portfolio sizes it found versus the orange. Um, the fact that the blue is underneath it, it goes up and down, means it always found smaller portfolios. In fact, when you come up here at 40 portfolios, 40 assets in a portfolio, and you work your way down, you see that the best portfolio D-Wave finds without an affine transformation is around 32 assets. It's not acceptable. So what happens is when you run from 20 to 40 stocks, you see that the blue values are both above and below, and that's very, very helpful. Another engineering accomplishment was the Monte Carlo fat tail approach. So this combines random sampling with sampling on all the different asset sizes. And so what we're able to find is those couple of asset portfolios, a couple of small portfolios that really have a terrific Chicago quantum net score. Because as you get larger and larger, you're diversifying away your risk, but also your potential outperformance. We still search the entire space, but it's nice to know in advance where the best values are going to be, or most likely to be. We also did some real improvement with visualization. So over to the left, you see the sharp ratio. Now, a higher sharp ratio is better. You see whether you're running a discrete distribution or a fat tail, your best sharp ratios are just they're really hard to find and they're not that different. So. Maybe your best 50 or 100 sharp ratio values are about the same. But with the Chicago quantum net score, what you find is small portfolios can have really terrible Chicago quantum scores. And as you move to larger and larger portfolios, the range goes away. And so you see here, roughly you know 22 to 44 stock range is pretty small. But there are portfolios with really great rates CQNS values. <coughs> those are the ones that you want to find. Those are our nuggets, golden nuggets, and we can see those with this type of visualization. <coughs> also want you to meet the Chicago Quantum team. Myself, I'm Jeffrey Cohen. We have Clark Alexander, who's a PhD in mathematics. He's a real whiz on discrete mathematics. He not only has taught at university, written papers, is writing a book on quantum computing, but also serves clients today with advanced data analytics. And then Alex Kahn, senior executive with an insurance and enterprise IT background. And he's also got a very strong sense of what it takes to build a portfolio for software or consulting. He's great in sales. Um, and he's got a much kind of broader sense of the quantum infrastructure. He's also been teaching at a university. And so Terrific to have Clark, Alex, and myself on board. Um, our skill sets are complementary. Here's our research artifacts where you can find them. We have two papers on archive. Our medium um, has a number of blog articles, or just have point four. Um, ResearchGate, Google Scholar, and we list all of the public citations and acknowledgments that we received on our website. These links are active. I'm assuming D-Wave will post this chart. And then last but not least, we had a quote said about us that I just want to share with you. And this is from Professor Michael Mainelli, who's the executive chairman of Z Yen Group, and he runs um, FS Club. So it's a webinar that will already be completed by the time you're watching this video. The webinar will examine what may well be the earliest actual quantum computing application in finance since Z Yen first looked at implications of quantum computing back in 1998. We do hope to be an in-business production application of quantum computing that serves the financial services industry and also serves individual investors. I want to thank you very much for listening. And again, Jeffrey Cohen, Chicago Quantum, appreciate your time. You take care now.